All right, guys, it's Eugene, and I'm coming to you today because we're towing. We're towing some shit. Gonna go take this uh, Rivian R1T. I've got it in towing mode, and we're gonna go pick up about 4,000 pounds of gloves. Um, it's about two or three pallets worth, uh, and then I'll make sure once I actually pick it up and get back to the office, I'll give you guys a recording of the actual arrival notice and pickup. Um, that way you can know that that's the actual weight. I'm not fibbing. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the setup here. Obviously, car's in tow mode. And this is the trailer. Um, it's massive. I hate this trailer. It's a huge pain in the butt. It sways super freaking hard and it's just the worst. But at the end of the day, we can fit about eight pallets in here pretty easily. So it's relatively nice. Um, we are gonna go ahead and see if I can find the total weight of this trailer somewhere. All right, guys, I couldn't find the weight for the trailer, so I'll try and find that when I get back. Um, but we'll get going here. Before I get started, getting set up for towing, pretty simple, I mean, not very hard. The only major issue is that you need to pop the, um, the hide guard off, which I'll show you here. This is the thing that you're popping off of the bottom of the truck, so it's kind of, set up like that on the truck. Um, and the way that you get it off of these, these two screws, very simple, very easy. Um, the only major thing that I ran into is that the actual, um, the hitch here, so we'll zoom in on it. This guy right here, the one that came with the actual hitch here was the wrong size. It was just too short, just a little too short. So I had to go buy one that was a little bit longer. This one was also just barely long enough, but that was the only major hiccup that I ran into is that the hitch that Rivian put in here, or this this piece right here, this is quite a bit thicker than the one that's on the F-150 and I think on other cars. So be aware when you're buying this piece right here, this 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 guy, this, this thing right here. When you're buying this piece right here, this guy, where my finger is, you need to account for the fact that this piece is going to be a little bit wider like by a millimeter. And so if you get it just too short, it's not gonna fit in correctly. Anyways, we'll jump into the car, get the trip planned, and I'll show you guys about how long we're going. All right, guys, so the trip is in. We have 11 miles to travel, so that means a 22 mile trip total. And when I plugged this in, I had 152 mile range, and now I have 73. So lost more than 50% of my range after plugging this guy in. Obviously a little concerning, but I should be able to make it. That being said, I'll give you guys an update when I get there, how it was with the unloaded trailer, and then I'll give you an update after I arrive with a loaded trailer. Okay guys, quick note while I'm driving so far. Already quite a bit more comfortable of a ride than um, my Ford F-150. Gotta give it to the dynamic suspension on this thing. When I'm driving in my F-150, I feel like I'm getting tossed around by this trailer in the back. In the Rivian, I feel like I'm not getting tossed around too much. It actually feels relatively cush. Of course, that's all gonna change when I get on the highway. All right, guys, we're still going here. We're on the highway. I thought I'd give you a quick update. The moment I got onto the highway, it, my range went from 72, 78, down to 55. I'm currently trending at 65 miles per hour average. So immediately getting to the actual speed that I need to be going on the highway, I lost about 20 miles. Um, obviously if I had a full charge, that wouldn't be nearly as concerning, but I am at 50% charge when I started this journey. And so with a, what looks to be 50% charge, I'm gonna get 55 miles if I stayed on the highway at this speed the entire time, which the majority of this trip is on the highway. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind if you are going to be towing with this thing, especially with anything quite as large as what I've got behind me. You're going to lose quite a bit of range immediately after you get onto the highway. So, hopefully that is of good insight. Alright guys, back on it again. So we've arrived at, arrived at our destination. We've traveled a full 11 miles to get to this beautiful little spot near Brighton Canal. and. Like I mentioned before, when I got onto the highway, immediately after I got to the speed of 60 plus, actually 50 plus, my range dropped from 70 all the way down to 50. However, I think 
the computer was trying to figure out how much range I was actually going to get because it didn't really change from this number the entire time. So I was stuck at 55 miles pretty much the entire time I was towing on the highway. Um, now we're going to go ahead and load this thing up. We're going to get 4,100 pounds of gloves added into the back of this trailer. And then once we get going, I'll actually go ahead and start a new trip. That way we have a much better idea of how things are going here. So let's go ahead and reset this trip. So we're going to go off of trip B, trip A, well, too late now. Um, but at least we'll get a little bit more information about how things are going uh, on the way back, which is really what matters, because this is when we're going to be towing 4,000 pounds along with the trailer. And in we go. Number three. And then number four. All right, guys, just confirming the weight. We got 4,145 pounds on five pallets. Filled it up relatively well. Um, and we're gonna get going on the road here. All right, guys, we're packed up. We're good to go. Again, just look at that goddamn fridge I'm towing behind this thing. I gotta admit, I hate this trailer. It's really one of the worst trailers in the world. I don't know why it got purchased, but this is what we use at our office and our warehouse. Um, I did want to make a quick note. Uh, the strangest sight I've ever seen in my entire life was going into that facility and being able to see the back wall. Um, in almost 15 years of running business and running gloves, I have never once been to this facility and been able to see the back wall. And I just had a conversation with the forklift driver and he said in his 15 years of, or no, in his 10 years of working as a forklift driver, he has never seen it this slow. Um, so strange times guys. Uh, we're not really too affected at this moment. I mean, for us right now, we're still bringing in about the same amount of gloves. We're trying to keep it in people's hands and keep hands protected. But what's strange for me is to see how little goods are in that warehouse at this moment. So interesting. Anyways, probably a mixture of the ports being backed up. LA is usually the, the biggest bottleneck and it sounds like it's getting worse because there's a lot, there's a shortage of class A drivers according to the, um, forklift driver luckily for us we're getting most of our stuff through new york but it is it is extremely strange so all right let's get going enough pontificating on the status of things all right so we have 55 miles left on the the vehicle with what looks to be just under 50 percent charge and we're going to go ahead and start with a zero distance trip b and we will reconvene at the end. Again, I am traveling 11 miles to get back to my warehouse. All right, guys, some fun information about how the drive is going so far now that we have 4,000 additional pounds. I've lost an additional 10 miles. I've only been driving for about 30 seconds now, and I just got up to speed of about 50 miles per hour. And immediately after getting 50 miles per hour, the computer adjusted, and I'm at 45 miles now. So it is definitely telling that there's additional weight in the trailer, which is pretty cool for me to see at least. Um, on the other end of it, it's kind of scary to see that right now I've got a big old yellow, big old yellow thing here saying I've got 45 miles left with what looks to be just under 45% charge. Um, cool, neat, sweet. All right, guys, we have made it back to the warehouse. We've traveled a total of 10.2 miles. It says average speed of 34 miles per hour, but I will go ahead and say that I was absolutely driving at about 65 miles per hour for about five or six miles of this. Um, average duration, 18 minutes, and then efficiency, obviously 1.13 miles per kilowatt hour. Insane, um, lost so much efficiency on there and then total energy used was nine kilowatt hours. Um, now that the trailer is taken off, I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove me out of trailer and get us to all purpose here. Going back to all purpose. And so now back to all purpose, 
Again, like I mentioned before, I started with about 175 mile range available. Now I have 103. Pretty crazy. Um, I'm well under 50% now. And I have to say, you lose a lot. It's not as efficient as you would hope it to be. But on the other end of it, you know, efficiency goes out the window when you're driving a trailer that's twice the height of the vehicle that you're in. And then also, I'm relatively positive that the trailer itself is actually pretty heavy, which I'll confirm when I get back in the office. Again, 4,145 pounds of gloves in there along with this monstrosity. I have no information about how heavy that trailer really was. Uh, the registration, the purchase papers, all of that stuff, totally missing. The trailer itself is a custom trailer. It was made from the back of a box truck. So I have no idea how much it actually weighs, but what I did do was I looked up a trailer that would have been the same-ish. It's only about half the height of our trailer, um, but it is 8.5 by 20, and the total comes up to 3,200 pounds. 3,200 pounds plus the 4,145 means that we were towing 7,345 pounds total. You know, towing 7,345 pounds, nowhere near the 11,000 pounds that the R1T should be able to tow. And I'm not entirely sure if I would have gotten 159 miles out of it if I was at a full charge. N no idea. Maybe, maybe if my trailer was half the height that it was, that would make a huge difference. But given the circumstances, given what I was towing, I honestly think I probably would have gotten at most maybe 100 miles, maybe 75. Um, so take from that what you will. Honestly, I don't need to do more than 22 miles at a time ever in my R1T. Um, and more likely than not, if I ever have to tow again, I'll probably use the F-150 just because, you know, I like my R1T. I don't want to put too many towing miles on it. And the F-150 is the actual work truck while my R1T is my personal. That being said, guys, let me know if you have any comments. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you have other thoughts or concerns about how I could have done this. And then don't forget to subscribe. Much appreciated for you guys making it all the way through. And see you next time.